Well, there's no shortage of news around today. You wouldn't know it was the week before Christmas, would you? Joining me to get through it all is Liberal MP Garth Hamilton and former New South Wales Labor Treasurer Michael Costa. Gentlemen, good evening. Michael, I'll start with you. You're a Labor man. What did you make of the resignation of the, the NT Chief Minister, Natasha Files, today? Well, I thought there was no choice but for her to go. But, uh, look, the whole thing was very sloppy, given the sorts of uh, amounts of money that... Uh, are likely to be attached to those shares. I thought it was a, r a ridiculous position for her to put herself in, um, particularly given the fact that uh, she had a, an incident, I think, about four weeks ago with another bundle of shares. So it was really sloppy, amateurish, and at the end of the day, I think she had no choice but to go. Yep. Well, I mean, you know, you'd think you'd know what shares you had, and after the first time around, you'd do something about it. But Anyway, stupidity in politics, who knew? Uh, now, Garth, to you, good news for your leader, Peter Dutton, today. This um, latest news poll has put him ahead of Anthony Albanese on a number of fronts. Dutton is regarded as more experienced, he's stronger, he's a more decisive leader than Anthony Albanese, but it, it does still say that he's less likeable and trusted. Um, I think this gives some hope to the, the opposition, does it not, that... As a leader, Dutton this year, particularly in the last few months, has really propelled himself to the fore in the face of some great weakness from the federal government and Anthony Albanese. Well, look, it's great to see Australia get to know uh, the Peter Dutton that I know and the strong leader that he is. And certainly 2023 has provided lots of challenges for both him and the Prime Minister. And I think very clearly uh, Peter's done very well. But look, polling comes and goes. I think the real question will be at the next election when people will be asking themselves, are we better off under this Labor government uh, who have not pursued policies that are addressing the needs of the average Australian out there and, and have had a, a zealotry about the way they've gone about their business, not listening uh, to Australians, be it on The Voice uh, or other issues. Uh, I think the comparison is going to get uh, worse and worse as the economy continues uh, to look quite bad, uh, particularly for young people trying to save money to get on the housing yeah, and this is why I said earlier in the show, I suspect as soon as interest rates start coming down and uh, inflation starts going down, the government is going to start looking at another election because you may as well get going while the rubber's hitting the road. Now, I want to get both of your thoughts on what's happening in Sydney right now. We've got these pro-Palestinian supporters who've descended on Sydney's town hall where the Prime Minister is giving a, a key speech. I mean, Michael... But these protesters, you know, they're calling for all the usual stuff, a permanent ceasefire, an immediate end to the siege and occupation, as they say, of Gaza and the West Bank. They want Penny Wong to cancel her visit to Israel next year. Um, wasn't it only last week, Michael, that we, along with New Zealand and Canada, basically called for a ceasefire? Well, that's true, and uh, I think it was the wrong decision, as I said um, previously on uh, on Sky. I, I think uh, it was a very foolish um, position for the Australian government to take. Uh, and you can see from that demonstration, look at the placards. Um, you know, Palestine has a right to defend itself was one I just saw there, which uh, seems to imply that... Uh, you know, Hamas was justified in mm. what it was doing, which is just absurd. Uh, look, I think Labor's got a real mm. problem on this, and um, part of it's got to do with its own internal politics, mm. the... Um, the branches in Western Sydney uh, that are putting pressure on MPs. Uh, but more broadly, in a strategic sense, it's got to do with the sort of rise of the left in the Labor Party and the decline, particularly of uh, the New South Wales right, which um, always provided a sort of countervailing force to some of these nutty positions, which have always been around. They've been around for decades um, uh, in terms of uh, the left of the Labor Party. Um, what I find ex extraordinary about this is I heard a Labor minister today trying to draw some sort of moral equivalence between Islamophobia and anti-Semitism mm. in the context of what's going on, which is absolute nonsense. I mean, you know, the ignorance of these people is... And, uh, and by the way, I support people's right to protest, ignorant or not. They're entitled to show their ignorance uh, as long <laughs> as they don't call for genocide. Yes. Um, but when you get Labor ministers sort of you know, trying to draw this moral equivalence between the two phenomena, it's its its really disturbing. I mean, there were over 400 mosques in um, Israel. Anybody who's been to Israel uh, knows that there is a active, practising, supported um, Islamic community in Israel. You can't say the same thing about, uh, you know, the Jewish communities in, in the Arab states that surround it. It's just a nonsense to, to draw an equivalence between 
Islamophobia and anti-Semitism uh, in this context. Of course, we're opposed to Islamophobia, but this is not what this is about. This is about Israel's right to exist, and mm. let's not try and you know hide it or confuse the issue. That's what it's about. And these protests just show people's ignorance. Well, you're certainly not going to find uh, 400 synagogues in the middle of the Gaza Strip. And, and this has been part of the, the problem here, Garth, as, as Michael says. Labor's sort of talked out of both sides of its mouth on this. There are deep divisions within the party about its response to Israel and Gaza. You've had dozens of high-profile Labor figures, including members of the Albanese government, who've now broken ranks and accused Israel of violating the human rights of Palestinians, and they've accused Israel of policies aimed at the domination of one people over another. I mean, if they can't get their message straight, if the government can't get its message straight, then, A, it's no surprise protesters would be hitting something like the PM today because he doesn't even know what he's saying on this, but it really risks our position as an ally of Israel and an ally of the West when we can't decide, the government can't decide, whether it supports a democracy or a terrorist organisation. This could not be a more sick perversion of the truth. Now, Israel has a long and proud history of seeking a two-state solution. Uh, that, that's, that's Israel's legacy. That's what it has sought. Um, Hamas seeks the destruction of Israel from the river to the sea. And to suggest that there's some kind of equivalence there is absolutely extraordinary. Uh, we need to be very, very clear on where we stand as a nation, as a Western democracy, uh, standing up for those who do seek freedom, uh, those who do want to see the embrace of democracy spread further and further around the world, uh, and to stand up against terrorism. And goodness me, you would think this is a very, very simple uh, position for us to take. But look, I go back to that UN resolution and point out once again, this is a resolution that not only did it not condemn Hamas, it didn't even mention Hamas. It was the weakest possible weasel way out, uh, the worst fence sitting you could possibly undertake. And it is no surprise, sadly, that this Albanese government has taken that position. Now, Michael, we've got a minute left, but I just want you to put your treasurer hat on because there's a new survey has found 60% of Australians believe the economy is either in recession or will tip into one next year. What do you make of that? Look, I think it's unlikely. And the reason I say that uh, is not to uh, diminish the pain that people are suffering. Anybody that's got a, a mortgage in the current environment is certainly under stress. And uh, certainly they would be feeling like there's a more than a, a recession on, a very extreme recession if you're in a mortgage holder. However, those migration numbers are precisely aimed at uh, keeping the GDP numbers yeah. uh, high. And what you're going to find is if you bring in, you know, uh, 700,000 people over a couple of years, they're going to spend money on goods and services and the way GDP is measured, um, that feeds right into it. So I don't see a technical recession coming about, but that doesn't diminish the pain that people are suffering at the moment. Indeed. Gentlemen, Garth Hamilton, Michael Costa, Merry Christmas to you both. We'll see you next year.